Hi there, Andre here from PSD Box. On one of my latest tutorials I talked about adjustment layers and showed you the benefits of using adjustment layers because you had the option to use blend modes. Uh, you didn't uh, affect the original image and that uh, you had the option to change the settings of the adjustment at any time. Well, in this tutorial I want to talk a bit about one particular adjustment which uh, which is the hue saturation it's a quite commonly used one and I want to show you what you can do with it the interface how you can use uh, how to make a selective adjustments uh, using the features that this adjustment has so I hope you like uh, this tutorial well I have this image here uh, you can use any image that you have, it's not important at all. And the first thing I'll do is uh, add that adjustment layer. And if you remember from uh, the last video I made, uh, I said it's a lot easier to add it from here. So I'll use, I'll select hue saturation. And this is the interface of the adjustment. A new adjustment layer have been uh, created on the on the layers palette. You can see that it's, uh, it's particular icon here and this is the layer mask of it. Remember that layer masks are created automatically with adjustment layers. And here you have the sliders to change the hue, the saturation and the lightness of the of the image. And well let's go uh, step by step. Um, on the top I'm using Photoshop CS6 by the way. If you're using another version you might um, find uh, some differences but um, most of the the most important things that I will explain here will apply to other Photoshop versions. So on CS6 on the top you have these two icons. This icon is for the adjustment itself and this is for the layer mask. We will talk about this a bit later. And let's start with this one. On the top we have a drop down list uh, you, with a few presets which you can choose uh, to change the style of the image. These are uh, saved presets. I don't know if you can save your own but uh, you have a few ones here, I never use them, but uh, here they are if you want to use them. Then you have another drop down which allows you to select a few colors. Uh, this is for selective adjustments, we'll talk about this uh, a bit later. With this icon here what you can do is pick uh, one color from the image and adjust it. I'll show you how, how that works and then you have these three sliders I just uh, showed you. You can change the hue, you can change the saturation and the lightness. I'll reset it. Then you have these other icons here which uh, will activate once you make, uh, once you select a particular color here. So these are for selective color adjustments as well. Then you have the colorize option which allows you to add um, um, single color to, to the entire image. So um, that's what this option does. And then here on the bottom you have a few other icons. This allows you to create, to clip this adjustment to the layer below it because if you hover the mouse over it you will see that you will see this um, message. Let me do it with, uh, with, uh, with the mouse. So you see this adjustment affects all layers below it and if you click you will create the clipping mask. You can see that new arrow has been created. So you can create clipping, uh, clipping masks from here as well. If you remember I said that if you press and hold the alt key and put the cursor between the two layers you will create the clipping mask. If you know if you don't know what clipping masks are I watched the previous video when I talked about adjustment layers. And then I have this other icon which uh, is not active because we didn't make any adjustment but uh, if I decrease the saturation to minus 100 and now that it's active if you click it and hold it you'll see the, the original image and if you let go you'll see the image with uh, the adjustment applied so it's a quick way of making of seeing the before and after just a click and let go and you can see that and this is for resetting you can go back to the default state and this is the visibility icon the same as this one if i deactivate it you turn off the uh, you turn off the layer and if you want to delete it, you can click this icon and it will ask you if you really want to delete that adjustment layer. Now let's go uh, back here. As I said, we will talk about the masks a bit later. We will skip this uh, preset part. I just uh, show you how that looks. Just select the preset and then you and there you go. Um, let's go with the hand icon first. Uh, if you click this icon and go on the image, uh, let's say I want to make this dress uh, black and white to make it or black. 
um, I can click on one of the colors here and as, as soon as I do that you will see that this um, selection here appears and that means it detected this color as red and you can click here and move it around and you can fine-tune the selection and if you want to see what you're doing you can decrease the saturation to zero and move this around and you can see how that affects the colors I want to make this dress which is almost red I want to make it black without affecting the skin so here's where we go into selective adjustments and you can also see that here on this drop down it recognizes this as reds so it selected the red uh, channels for me automatically you can also choose this yourself but uh, uh, it automatically detects the color that you selected and you can adjust this you can fine tune it if you click here this is the main selection and this is the feather so this uh, you can fine tune the selection you can see that on the skin here if I drag it to the left I include the yellow and the orange colors and these ones are affected by the saturation slider as well so if I put it close to the reds the skin is not that much affected by the adjustment and in this case the blues and um, and this purple color here is not affected at all because we don't have any any of those colors on the image but I'll show you this adjustment on another image as well so with this you can make uh, selective adjustments so you can see if I go to the orange part the skin is now gray and the dress which is red is not really affected too much about uh, is not affected too much by this with this icons here what you can do is include or exclude colors from from this selection here so for example if I want to add another color like uh, the lips for example I can click on that and it samples that color as, as well and it changes the selection based on what I selected or if you want to include the dress you can click there and it modifies the selection I rarely use these ones I usually make the selections myself using this here and again you can make the before and after that's what you do with this let's go on the other uh, I have another image you'll see this a lot better so let me go here this is a lot has a lot more color so you will be able to see this effect a lot better you can see that I have this hue saturation adjustment as on the previous image and what I'll do is I'll use this hand icon because it's a lot more it's a lot easier so I can uh, well actually let's work with the blues with uh, this cyan color here and I'll sample that and you can see that it recognized this as cyan and it made the selection for me I can fine-tune this and what I want to do is change the hue let's make it for example red and you can see all the cyans on the image change and let's make it red and if I wanted I could uh, extend the selection to affect other colors but uh, let's leave it there and maybe expand this you can see that on the edge where the colors change let me zoom in a bit you can see that if you if you expand the selection uh, this transition is a lot smoother than if you do this because you're restricting that and you're making a hard edge it's just like using a mask so we can feather that selection and now we have all the cyans controlled by this uh, slider you can desaturate them you can uh, you can if you decrease the lightness you can make them dark black actually that's what you uh, what you can do with this adjustment you can make really cool selective um, selective uh, selections of the colors I'll go back to the other image because now I want to talk a bit about the mask so now that we've seen how you can make selective adjustments let's see how you can work with the mask and with this other icon here if you click on this icon you will go to the mask section which allows you to change a few a few things here right now my mask is empty I didn't paint anything on it but uh, let me go back and let's assume I want to make this dress completely black without affecting the skin the first thing I'll do is reset and resample the color of the dress again and I'll decrease lightness to zero and you can see that it it did a pretty bad selection so that's why I want to adjust this myself I don't want to affect the skin too much so I have to carefully adjust the selection 
until every bit of the of this um, dress is black or most of it okay something like that we still have this part here but uh okay we still have that part there but uh, anyways now you can see that we have this um, dress almost black we could apply another adjustment to it but uh, let's leave it like that but we still have some problems here you can see that the lips and part of the makeup here is also darkened because they have a really close match to the to the color of the dress so what we can do with that well we can use the layer mask I made a tutorial about layer masks, if you don't know what layer masks are and how they work and what they are used for, you can watch a tutorial, I'll put a link here which will take you to that tutorial. So I'll get the brush tool, I'll use a soft brush and a medium sized brush, I'll select the layer mask, put my foreground color to black because I want to hide the effect here on the eyes, opacity and flow to 100%, mode normal. And just paint over the eyes and all the over the lips as well and also on the hair because i only want that effect to be visible on the dress so I will mask this part of the hand as well, of the arm. You have to be careful not to touch the dress because you will see that now you're taking away the effect on the dress as well and that's not what you want. You can paint back with white. You can do that on the fingers as well. Don't forget to switch to black if you want to take away the effect. I'm doing this uh, really fast because I just want to show you how it works uh, here on the legs as well. So you have to be careful with this adjustment not to leave areas that you don't want. Just take care of every detail that you see. And let's open that. Um, adjustment window again I'll go back I'll zoom in a bit here on the face see this part here and I'll open that adjustment window again go to the masks and select the mask first and here we have two sliders one is the density and one is the feather I wanted to see the mask itself this is the mask you can show the mask only by pressing and holding the alt key and clicking on the mask and that way you show the mask there or you can deactivate it if you press and hold the shift key and you click on the mask you will deactivate the mask disable layer mask and I want you to see what it does with the density what you control is the opacity of the mask so Pure black means that you hide, you hide that effect entirely. And if you reduce the density to like 50%, you make it gray, which is 50% opacity. So it's just like using the opacity, but only on the mask. Um, so remember that we, we masked the parts of the lips, so the effect is not visible here. But if I decrease the density to zero, it's like, it's like no, not having the mask at all. So you can see it's white. Uh, let me change the size a bit so you can see it better so you see it's white and if I increase the density it, the part that I just painted starts to show up there so you can control the the opacity let's say of the of the mask which is really it's really handy also another cool feature is that you have the feather option here so it's like applying blur to the to the mask itself 
so you can feather the effect. Remember that the, the adjustment is it's still the same. It's still the same, I didn't touch it. I just work with the layer mask. So I'm just working with the parts that I'm showing or hiding on the effect. If I decrease the density to zero, uh, the feather has no effect whatsoever because the mask is like, is like having an empty mask. But if I in increase the density to 100%, let me use a hard brush so you can see it better. I'll fill this with white and I'll paint this part of the lips with a hard brush. So now I hide, I hit that part of the effect but only on this part of the lips and if I show you the mask this is how it looks. And If I increase the feather, see how that smooth, uh, becomes smoother and that's because of this feather and let me show you what it did. And as I said, it's just like using the the Gaussian blur filter, but only on the mask, with the advantage that here you can control the amount at any time. So that's that's really that's really useful. You can also use the refine edge if, for example, you have you made a selection. For example, if you use the quick mask to make uh, to mask these parts here, you can use the quick mask edge and you have all the controls of the refine mask. I will probably talk about the refine mask and how it works on, a, on another video. Uh, you can also choose, you can also use the color range so you can sample for example uh, parts of the of the dress itself and with the shift key if you hold the shift key or if you use this icon here you can sample the colors to include on that selection. And that way you can uh, you can you can mask the effect on certain parts of the image and use those controls like uh, just like you did before. And then you can invert the mask. You can see here that the effect, everything that is black, uh, the mask is not applied to this uh, is not applied to these areas where the where you see the black parts. So I hope this is not too confusing. It requ it requires a bit of practice, but uh, it really gives you a lot of uh, a lot of uh, opportunities and a lot of um, freedom to create uh, all sorts of effects. And it makes things a lot easier having these controls on the layer mask. That's all I wanted to uh, show you about the hue saturation adjustment. I hope you liked this tutorial. Uh, remember that um, you need to practice this in order to understand how it works and apply it to your own images and understand yourself how this works. I just uh, showed you the, I just uh, showed you what I know. I hope you liked it and well, thank you for watching and see you next time.